Welcome to another In Studio. I am Tom Wright, and with me are two very important people from the city of Hastings to talk about two very important projects for the city. Um, I have with me Mr. John Hinsman, the Community Development Director. I had to look to make sure I got that right. <laughs> me too. Yeah. And we have Lee Stoffel, the Communications Coordinator. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Yes. Well, thanks for coming in and sharing your time to talk about these two projects because um, big deal, as I said, and also I understand uh, you guys need the, the residents' input. You're seeking help on help, uh, developing these. We are absolutely seeking people's help to develop these. So uh, thanks for having us here today. Yeah. We just wanted to take the opportunity to be able to present what the different plans we're working on are. Uh, they're a little bit different between the both of them and then answer some of the questions that you might have today. Definitely. Well, uh, and the two projects we're talking about here, the, the Vermilion Street Corridor Study that's taking place uh, right along 61 there, a uh, big, very, obviously very important area to Hastings. And then uh, taking a, a bigger picture, the Hastings Comprehensive 2040 Plan um, that's also in the works um, that seeking your uh, help with. So let's tackle this one by one. We can start with the Vermilion Street Corridor, All right. if that's okay with you guys. Um, and John, first of all, tell us uh, what is this study? What is the purpose of it? Sure, sure. The Vermilion Street Corridor study is an economic development land use study as to what we want to see along Vermilion Street. Vermilion Street Highway 61 is traveled by a lot of people. Uh, people can go down it every day, recognize things that work well, things that don't work so well. Mm -hmm. We really looked at this from an economic development standpoint as to how can we increase some of the development that could occur. There's a lot of great sites within Hastings along Vermilion Street that are ripe for development and how can we have a plan to help facilitate that from taking place. We've had so much good work that's been done on the riverfront over the last couple of years and we want to be able to pivot away from what we've been doing there into economic development opportunities along Vermilion Street. I see. I understand you guys have hired an outside consultant to help with this pr process, correct? We have. We have. We've hired uh, House of Levine, uh, a planning and economic development firm to help us out with this. We have an, a consultant to come in to work on this specifically because they work on these type of plans. They're very good at working with the public and getting the input, the feedback from the public and putting these plans together in such a way that not only are, are they something that uh, expresses what we want to see, but something that's also usable as well. Okay. Uh, what are, I understand you guys did have a meeting on this one uh, back in June, June 26th, you had an initial group meeting? We do, yeah. The one thing that's really interesting about this is we have a group of individuals that are helping us out, community members, both with the Vermilion Street plan and then an entirely separate group for the comprehensive plan. So we have a, a group of uh, 15 to 20 individuals that we'll be meeting with periodically as sort of our steering committee. Be, things that we'll be able to bounce ideas off of them to make sure that we are going in the direction that the community wants us to go in on that. So the people on this corridor on the steering committee are made up of business owners, people from the neighborhood, and people that are interested within the development of Vermilion Street in the future. I see. And I understand there's a website for the project as well? We do, yeah. We've got a website that uh, we'll be going through here. On the main page that we have uh, in the city of Hastings, page uh, HastingsMN.gov. Under the news tab we have a big tab that says citizen feedback wanted and we do want your feedback on this and so we outline what the two plans are and how you can provide uh, some uh, assistance for us and the assistance can come in a number of different ways. You can go online we have online surveys for both of these plans on the Vermilion Street plan we're looking for business input, resident input. What we're looking at there is how do you use Vermilion Street? What changes might you want to see within there? And so we can access that and, and give us your feedback there. And we also have some interesting mapping tools as well that we have so you can visually look at the corridor and... Thank you, Lee. There we I'll go. find that right there. That's and right. we'll... And my, uh, my assistant, Vanna, will help me out go. there. <laughs> throw it right on there. Look at this working. There we go. Perfect. There we go. So we've got... This is... Uh, the page that we have for Vermilion Street, if you click on down here, Tom. Oh, y'all let you take I'll the, drive, I guess. Yeah, we'll, there go, there we go. We'll, we'll go, we'll, we'll go here and be directed to the project website page where I'll go through a couple of things as to how we can get some input, uh, how you can provide us input on this. So we've got a couple of different things here. We've got the survey itself. 
which is here. If you click on this, you'd go directly to the survey. Should take a few minutes to answer. Provide some really good feedback yeah. for us as to what, how you use and what the future you'd like to see on Vermilion Street. Also be listing of our community meetings coming up here. We're going to be having various meetings coming where you can come in, talk with us, talk with the consultants, and see what's happening in the plan development. The first one of these we'll be scheduling about uh, the first part of September, so we'll be having public information out on that shortly. And this is kind of a fun tool because I'm kind of a map geek, so that you can look on this thing called Map Social, which if I click onto this, you will be going to a map of Vermilion Street, and if I click down here a little bit, huh. you, you can see that there are, you can put different things and, and show what you'd like to see within it. Now, if I can remember exactly. Kind of looks like a Pokemon Go kind of thing. Yeah, it does look like a Pokemon Go thing. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to, to find any gymnasiums or take care of catch any <laughs> Poke Monsters or anything like that, but uh, we'll see what we can do here. So I am going to go in here and see if I can remember how to how to sign back up here again. You can oh, sure. you have a sign up name here. And we can trust everybody that's watching with your passwords. So oh, most, uh, your most, password. most, most sure definitely. I'll put my banking record in here too. We'll be we'll sure. be all set for everything Social, here. Social, all that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. The nice thing too is on both of the sites they do have a YouTube video that explains um, step by step how to use oh. Map Social. Nice. Yep. So it, it'll just guide you through the process. You can get very detailed while you're using it. You can actually upload photos specifying what the, a, you know, a particular spot that you're looking at. If you want to show something, um, you can also just leave a comment. It's up to you. But it, it will walk you through the process of how to log in and how to create points. Wow. Yeah, so this is cool here. So here, here's City of Hastings and the Vermilion Corridor outlined. And so as you can see to the right here, there are a number of different things that you can comment on. Is something a community asset? Let's see. Unfortunately, uh, Tom Wright's cable studio is outside the corridor, oh, so I can't. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, that would totally I, I, be a definitely big be a community star. asset yes. on there. But uh, and Todd Field would, would qualify as that. Oh, for sure. So we click on the community asset, go over to Todd Field, and click here, and we can describe what it is. Uh, great place. I'll just put Todd Field first of all. You know what it is. And it's a great place to watch a game. Nice. And then you could upload an image as well. If you had oh. something on your phone, if you were there at the time, yeah. put a picture of that and submit it. So now my comments are recorded okay. on the map here. They're officially on there and then for everybody to see at that point yep. as well? Yeah, everyone that to goes see. on the website? Yeah, okay. what I'm showing here is my portion of it. And so you can comment on problematic inter intersections, public safety concerns, mm -hmm. undesirable uses, a variety, a variety of different things. And if I go to onto map gallery here, I should be able to see all features that people have commented on. So we haven't had this live for too long, so we don't have a lot on here, but you can see we do have some comments. So you can look at other people's comments as well. Let's see this star over here. Uh, the mills, in addition to being an employment center, are a visual landmark. If if I agree with it, I, hey, I'd put thumbs up to it. Oh, you can like and dislike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can oh, like and dislike to it as well. So, no cat videos yet. I don't. <laughs> no think. cat. Videos. And I'm not sure if that'll happen in the future or not. But <laughs> you so were tempted though, weren't you? <laughs> I was tempted to post a cat video on that one. So that that's how this works. That's the uh, the map social aspect we have for Very the cool. million quarter. So at the end, what do we want to get out of this? At yeah. the end of the day. We want to be able to have a plan that will identify key sites along Vermilion Street, key activities for us to do, uh, and then provide mechanisms for us to assist. I mean, some of these things, most of these things actually, will be done by the private market. They will go in, they want to be able to invest in sites. We want to be able to see what we believe are the most valuable sites, the most marketable, and what sort of role that we could have as a city to help facilitate development of that. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that we've, we've seen where we have a good track record with that. When we take a look at the, um, what, what happened over at the, the Napa Auto Parts show, store, for example. Sure. I mean, that was the, the Jiffy station that was temporarily closed for about 15 years or so. And it was nice to be able to 
identify that corner and do some work. We want to have more su successes like Jiffy as we go into the future here and uh, have more development opportunities that uh, we can work through. I see. And Lee, tell us about the response from the public so far in this and, and attendance at the meeting that you guys had, that sort of thing. What? Well, I think it's, it's very encouraging to see how many people we got involved with the um, the steering committee. It, I mean, both both the Vermilion Street project and the Hastings 2040 comp plan have had quite a few people step up to join those committees. So that's really encouraging. We like to see that. Sometimes it is hard to get people to come to meetings, yeah. um, which is why we're offering these other two methods where you can also just engage online. You don't have to make a long-term commitment. You can just come and fill out a survey. And even if you only have one point that you want to put on that map, that's fine. It's going to go into that whole community sourced um, map that we're going to take from this and, and look at. So um, it's kind of whatever people want to get involved, whatever level they want to get involved at, in, we have something for you. It could be quick, it could be something that you'll be willing to give 20 minutes for, something you're willing to give five minutes for, or something that maybe you're willing to get more involved and come to the public meetings. I see. John, let's uh, talk about what are some of the main ideas or suggestions so far that are kind of common denominators in, in this project? On the Vermilion Street, I think a lot of people see empty storefronts and development opportunities. So we, we hear a lot of that, that this corner here would be a great opportunity, this building here needs some work or, you know, or maybe needs to be taken down. The crossings along Vermilion Street can be difficult from a pedestrian standpoint. The appearance of the corridor itself, those are some of the comments we've been hearing right now. I see. I see. Well, wow. uh, well, let's move on to the next one then, right. uh, 2040 Comprehensive Plan. And um, perhaps while you're, while you're uh, surfing off onto that one, um, I'm going to challenge you here and uh, see if you can do them both at the same time. But All right. could you explain that? Give us the overview on that project and, and its sure. purpose. Copians of Plan is an interesting project. It's one in which we are taking a look at how we want Hastings to appear over the next 20 years. Mm. It's a big question. I mean, yeah. everything between land use, trans thank you. Really, land use, really, yeah. transportation, <laughs> parks, sewers, historic preservation, a lot of different things. And so a lot of the things that we do and make decisions that we make go back to the comprehensive plan. From a budgeting standpoint, from a land use standpoint, from an investment standpoint, we look at the comprehensive plan as a guiding document. What it does is it provides goals and objectives as to what we want to see in the future. And we want to be able to ensure that this plan is representative of the desires of the citizens of Hastings. And so public input is very important. Now the difference between this and Vermilion Street is this is encompassing the whole city where Vermilion Street is really looking at that corridor itself. Mm -hmm. That's, the Vermilion Street uh, corridor has a much more economic development focus on it. This one's much more holistic. It's looking at economic development, land use, parks, a lot of different things within it. But we have a similar circumstance here where we have a private consulting firm, uh, uh, MSA, who is helping us out and facilitating the plan. For both plans, we did have a pop-up meeting that we had at Rivertown Days. Yeah few weeks ago in which we had probably 30 or 40 people come by to discuss the plan with us. There was one opportunity. We'll be doing something similar here with this as we have done with Vermilion Street where we have a survey to tell us a little bit about how, what you feel about Hastings, what's, what, what is important, so we'll be able to gauge your opinion on that. And then also another mapping mechanism on this as well that you can go in and show us things within Hastings that are, are things that are of value to you, things you may want to see, maybe things you may want to change within that. With this one, we'll be having public meetings as well. We have, uh, the, the, we have one public meeting scheduled for August 3rd. We'll have other public meetings coming in. We have a steering committee of uh, citizens, business owners, again, about 15 or 20 of them that meets about every month or two to help us steer through here because this is a big project that we have. We do it once every 10 years and we had a lot of good work that was done 10 years ago mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that things are still relevant in the future. I see, I see. How do you foresee this 2040 plan compared to the 2030 plan? Is there <laughs> going to be a lot of changes or is it going to be very similar? What do you think? You know, the way that we approach this was as an update of that plan. I mean, you, as you know, over the last 10 years, from a development side, it was 
not a, a very active period. Uh, with economics going on, we didn't see as much of development as we thought 10 years ago. So a lot of the assumptions that we had in that plan are probably still good. So a lot of it's checking in to make sure that that is the case. And the other end of it is, are there other things that we would want to do differently? Mm. So that, that has a lot to play into it. I see, I see. And Lee, tell us about uh, those that want to get involved in this more and what are the different opportunities they can do so? Or yeah, I just wanted so? to point that out quick on the oh, website. Sure. And, and I had run through it that way, but if you want to get involved with the Hastings 2040 plan, you can go to our website and look under residents. And in the residents section is where we have the, the link to the Hastings 2040 information. Um, and then again, they have their own website that they've created with updates. So check our website frequently, check in, do the survey. Um, also, we often post um, updates on, on Facebook. So if you follow us on Facebook or Twitter, those are great places to get more information about when things are happening. And also one other thing I wanted to mention is both projects have a listserv. So if you want to sign up just to get email notification when there's an update on the sites, um, any sort of project updates, you can sign up for that. And both websites have that directly on their site where you can sign up. So that's another way that you can stay informed. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, you guys, uh, a couple of huge projects, and, but it sounds like uh, some very cool tools to help uh, engage the citizens more too. It is, it's much different, you know, just in the last 10 years. When we did the comprehensive plan and other planning efforts in the past, there was a heavy reliance on the public meetings, mm -hmm. which are great, but not everyone has the time or really has the desire to, to speak in public as to what they want to see, but they have an opinion that they want to share. This provides anyone the opportunity to, opportunity to share an opinion at any time. And the way that you can do it with the mapping software is quite innovative. You can really yeah. point to specific areas of town and uh, go through that. As my assistant is showing me here, I'm gonna pot on down here and look at the the mapping application that we have here. Lee, you're doing a great job of keeping us doing, on track here. Exactly. <laughs> Just call me Vanna. <laughs> call me Vanna on that one. And the nice thing about both of these applications are they do have tutorial videos that go along with them. And so with, with this one here, we can just, you don't have to necessarily sign in. You can comment as a guest. Mm. So we'll go in that way. That, that automatically pops up to show you the, the tutorial video if you want to oh, see, see that, it. which is good. But I've seen it, so hopefully I can know what I'm doing. <laughs> you can see a bunch of things on the map already, which are what other people have commented on. Similar thing where you can click on something and like it or add to it. I'm trying to think of uh, something down here. This says community asset, uh, Riverfront Park, great community asset. I'd, nice. I'd agree with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. There we go. Right. I don't want to disagree with it. I, no, yeah. I might not have an office <laughs> when I get back. You never know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or you can add something completely on your own as well. When you look at this list here, these are a tracking of the different issues that are up there and opportunities. Mm. If you click on submit a report, you can pull down this menu and select a number of different things, housing, parks, roads, good condition, bad condition, other opportunities. So if I looked at retail and commercial, for example, I could point to something on the map here and say, you know, we need more retail, you know. Wow. And report that, and that'll go on the map for all to see. Wow. So that we can, oh, a little shopping cart on there too. Nice. So now, the great thing about this is, from our standpoint, once people use this and put the comments in here, we'll really be able to focus in on some key areas, and what people want to see, and we can develop some of the goals and objectives, the policies that we have that are going to be reflective of what we see from these mapping and the, uh, the community survey applications. So that'll be really helpful for us. Wow. Yes. Um Wrapping things up here, the timeline for both these projects, yeah. it's the same, roughly the same? Roughly the same on that. We've started the last couple months. We'll be going through early 2018 with both projects. Okay, all right. And again, for anybody watching that wants to get connected or just be up to date or get involved, um, go to the city's website? Right. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, great. They, and there's actually separate links for each web page 
for Vermilion Street, you can go to hastingsmn.gov slash VSC for Vermilion Street Corridor. And in the business, under the business section, and then in the residence section, we have hastingsmn.gov slash hastings2040. So those are the quick links to get right to the page that will give you the updates and where we're at with those things. Absolutely. Very nice. And again, you guys are very active on Facebook and Twitter as well. Correct. Right. Great. Well, thank you both again for well, coming thank in. Thank you. And again, John Hinsman and Lee Stoffel from the City of Hastings talking about the Vermilion Street Corridor Study as well as the 2040 Comprehensive Plan. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>